As we near the second anniversary of the James Webb Space Telescope's mission, one thing has become crystal clear. The universe isn't behaving the way we thought it would. In just 20 short months, Webb has completely shaken up the foundation of modern cosmology. It's not just filling in the gaps, it's rewriting the story. But as incredible as these discoveries are, they've thrown scientists into some serious soul searching. Because what Webb is showing us it doesn't line up with the models we've trusted for decades. Let's rewind for a moment. For years, scientists believed that after the Big Bang, about 13.8 billion years ago, the first stars and galaxies took their time forming. According to our standard models, the early universe went through a period known as the Cosmic Dark Ages. Back then, the universe was filled with a thick fog of neutral hydrogen gas that trapped light preventing any stars or galaxies from shining through. That fog, we thought, didn't lift until about a billion years after the Big Bang, when the hydrogen was finally ionized, split apart by the intense light from newly forming stars. To glow that brightly, these galaxies would need to be massive, far bigger, and more developed than anything our models say should exist at that time. And the kicker? There just hasn't been enough time since the Big Bang for them to grow that large. Think about it. If these galaxies are as big and bright as they appear, they must have somehow fast-forwarded through billions of years of evolution, compressing the long, slow process of galaxy formation into just a few hundred million years. That completely breaks the rules we thought the universe was following. In essence, Webb has brought us face-to-face -face with a paradox. If our models are right, these galaxies shouldn't exist. But if these galaxies are real, and all the evidence so far says they are, then our models must be wrong. So now, scientists are asking the big questions all over again. Did the first galaxies form much faster than we ever imagined? Is there something missing in our understanding of the early universe? Could there have been unknown processes at work during the universe's infancy? Or, more radically, is it possible the Big Bang wasn't the beginning after all? Whatever the answer is, one thing's certain. The James Webb Space Telescope has opened a cosmic can of worms, and the universe we thought we understood is looking stranger and more exciting than ever before. So buckle up, because if these early galaxies are any indication, we're just getting started rewriting the origin story of everything. How in the world did these massive galaxies form so fast and shine so brightly so early in the universe's history? That's the big question that's been rattling the scientific community ever since the James Webb Space Telescope started sending back its mind-blowing images. Astronomers have actually coined a phrase for this cosmic mystery, too big, too soon. It captures the heart of the dilemma. These early galaxies aren't just a little surprising. They're flat out impossible by the standards of our current models. See, the kind of brightness Webb is picking up huge, brilliant galaxies glowing like cosmic lighthouses should only be coming from galaxies packed with as many stars as our Milky Way. And that takes time. Billions of years, according to everything we thought we knew. But these galaxies? They formed just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. That's the cosmic equivalent of a toddler lifting a car. So how is this even happening? Faced with this puzzle, scientists had to admit we were missing something. Something big. So, a group of researchers decided to dig deeper by handing the problem off to one of our most powerful tools, a supercomputer. They programmed this beast of a machine with everything we currently know about how galaxies form, from the chaotic flows of gas in the early universe to the physical laws governing gravity, energy, and chemistry, and ran complex simulations to watch it all unfold in virtual space and what they discovered was wildly unexpected. Instead of stars forming gradually and steadily, like we see in today's universe, these early galaxies might have been born through violent, unpredictable bursts of star formation. Think of it like this. Instead of lighting a candle, the early universe struck a cosmic match and lit a firework. Scientists call this bursty star formation. In this scenario, Galaxies spend long periods sitting quietly, then suddenly explode with intense activity, 
creating huge numbers of stars in a very short time. This would explain why these galaxies are so bright, so early. Their light isn't coming from slow growth. It's coming from sudden star-making frenzies. And that changes everything. If true, it means the universe had a much more chaotic and explosive beginning than we imagined. Not a slow and steady march toward complexity, but a series of dramatic let there be light moments, lighting up the cosmos far earlier and far brighter than expected. In fact, right after the James Webb Space Telescope began its science operations in mid-2022, it started detecting a surprising number of high redshift galaxies. Galaxies. Whose light has been stretched by the expansion of the universe, making them appear very distant and very ancient. Some of these galaxies date back to a time when the universe was less than 400 million years old. And yet, they were shockingly luminous. So luminous, in fact, that their existence directly contradicts the predictions made by the standard model of cosmology. That model, the one that's guided astrophysics for decades, tells us galaxies start small and grow over time. They're built slowly through a process of gravitational mergers and accumulation, woven into place by dark matter halos inside the so-called cosmic web. But these new findings suggest something else may be at play. Something faster, wilder, more unpredictable, Maybe the story of how galaxies formed isn't the quiet, hierarchical building block process we've always believed. Maybe it was messier, brighter, and a lot more dramatic. Whatever the case, the message is clear. The universe still has secrets, and Webb is just beginning to reveal them. Imagine this. We're finally starting to piece together how galaxies came to be, only to have the James Webb Space Telescope walk in and flip the table, again. Let's start with what scientists thought they understood. Using powerful computer simulations, researchers recently uncovered a surprising new insight. Galaxies don't need to be massive to shine brightly. In fact, if a galaxy forms its stars in short, intense bursts, instead of slowly and steadily, those flashes of light can make it appear far brighter than it actually is. This explains why Webb keeps spotting so many dazzlingly bright galaxies in the early universe. It's not necessarily because they're all gigantic. It could be because they're going through hyperactive phases of star making. The best part? These simulation results still line up with our current standard model of cosmology. The one that says galaxies grow over time building up from small clumps through a process called hierarchical formation. But here's the catch. That might be the only part still holding up. Because James Webb is exposing cracks in our model that run way deeper than just star brightness. Let's break it down. Problem hash one. Galaxies are showing up. Way too early. According to the standard model, the first billion years after the Big Bang, what we call the cosmic dark ages, should have been mostly quiet. The universe was full of neutral hydrogen, a thick cosmic fog that made it impossible for light to travel freely. Galaxies weren't supposed to form until after this fog lifted. But Webb is seeing something very different. It's finding fully formed, massive galaxies at the edge of the observable universe, only a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. That's basically the blink of an eye in cosmic terms. Take Macy's galaxy, for example. Webb spotted this ancient galaxy that existed when the universe was just 390 million years old. That's just 2.8% of its current age. It's like finding a grown tree when you expected a seedling. And Macy's galaxy isn't alone. There are many more candidates, with new ones being discovered all the time. Some may turn out to be even older. If that's the case, it means galaxies formed nearly instantaneously after the Big Bang, a serious violation of the timeline laid out in our textbooks. Problem hash two. Giant galaxy collisions are happening too soon. As if early galaxies weren't disruptive enough, now we're seeing massive galaxy clusters smashing into each other much earlier than expected. One of the most shocking examples? The formation of the El Gordo galaxy cluster. 
El Gordo is a cosmic heavyweight. It's the result of two enormous galaxy clusters colliding to form one supercluster. Based on its size and complexity, scientists assumed that kind of event should take billions of years to unfold. But Webb caught it happening when the universe was only half its current age. And that's a big red flag. According to the standard model, galaxies are supposed to form first, and only much later do they begin merging to form clusters like El Gordo. That's a slow, gradual process, except that El Gordo seems to have skipped the line entirely. It formed far earlier than it should have, suggesting either our model is off or something deeper is missing altogether. So, what does this all mean? We're at a crossroads. Either the James Webb Space Telescope is revealing rare cosmic anomalies, or it's showing us that our entire understanding of how the universe evolved might need an overhaul. Are we seeing evidence that galaxies formed in a flash? That star formation was more explosive than we imagined? And that massive structures like El Gordo came together long before they were supposed to? Or do we need a new cosmological model? One that can handle the too early, too bright, to massive nature of what Webb is revealing? Either way, the message is loud and clear. The universe isn't following the script. And we've only just started reading the first chapter. Revelation hash three. Monster black holes. Right at the dawn of time, when the James Webb Space Telescope turned its golden eye towards some of the universe's most ancient galaxies, tiny reddish smudges barely visible on the cosmic canvas, it saw something no one was expecting. Inside many of these baby galaxies, there were violent whirlwinds of energy swirling at their centers. Something massive, something powerful, was stirring up chaos right at their cores. The simplest and most likely explanation? Giant black holes. And we're not talking about small fry here. We're talking about black holes with the mass of millions of suns, already lurking in the heart of these young galaxies just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. Think about that. These are the ancestors of the supermassive black holes we see today, like the one at the center of the Milky Way. But these early monsters showed up far earlier than our models ever predicted. Astronomers had expected Webb might find some small black holes just starting to feed. Instead, it uncovered a whole population of big, bulky, already active black holes, tearing through surrounding gas clouds, stirring up those cyclonic signals we can now detect from Earth. And that opens a big question. Were these black holes born big? Or did they somehow grow insanely fast, defying everything we thought we knew about black hole growth and galactic evolution? Either way, these early findings are already pushing scientists to rethink the origin story of the first black holes in the universe. Revelation hash four, the curious case of the missing metals. As if the oversized black holes weren't enough of a shock, Webb delivered another twist, this time about galactic chemistry. A team of astronomers used the telescope to look more than 12 billion years into the past deep into a time when the universe was still forming its earliest large-scale structures. What they found was strange. The galaxies in that era weren't just forming stars faster and appearing brighter. They were also missing something fundamental. They didn't have nearly as many heavy elements, what astronomers call metals, as galaxies that formed later. These elements, like oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, and iron, are created in the hearts of stars and spread through galaxies when stars die. So, if early galaxies were already cranking out stars, why weren't they producing more of these elements? That's the mystery. Until Webb, astronomers didn't have the tools to accurately measure the chemical fingerprints of galaxies from so far back. Previous telescopes simply couldn't see that deep, or with that kind of precision. But now, with Webb's incredible sensitivity, we're learning that something about how early galaxies formed and evolved doesn't follow the rulebook we've been using for decades. There seems to be a break in the pattern, a disconnect between how much mass a galaxy had, how many stars it formed, and the amount of heavy elements it created. It's as if the universe had its own chaotic phase, doing things its own way in the beginning. And that's not just interesting. It's a major clue to understanding 
how everything came to be. So, what's next? The James Webb Space Telescope is just getting started. It's barely been operational for two years, and already it's rewriting cosmic history. If Webb keeps uncovering galaxies that are too bright, too massive, or too chemically primitive to make sense under the standard model, then it's not just tweaking a few details. It's forcing scientists to rebuild parts of the entire framework we use to understand the universe. And that's exactly why this mission is so exciting. It's not just about taking pretty pictures from deep space. It's about unlocking the deepest, most ancient mysteries of where we came from and what might still lie ahead. So what do you think is happening out there? Are we looking at a universe far stranger than we imagined? Is our cosmic origin story missing a few major chapters? We want to hear your take. Drop a comment below and let us know your thoughts. And if you're fascinated by the cosmos as much as we are, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more deep space discoveries.